Hello class, in this tutorial I'm going to go over primarily how you calculate a z-score given a certain probability and how you then calculate a probability given a certain z-score. And just a reference when I'm talking about probability or really in some cases percentile, uh, we're really talking about the area under a normal distribution. Okay, so if you come across, I'm going to go over a few questions today, but if you come across questions like these where you're trying to figure out how to convert uh, a P sub 5 or P sub X to calculate some kind of Z-score, the easiest way to do it is through StackCrunch. Now, as you can see here, there is no option to open StackCrunch, and so there's a little bit of a workaround that you have to do to be able to open StackCrunch and do problems that don't offer a StackCrunch option, and this is also true for the exam. So, that's very important to understand when it comes to doing an exam um, and you want to use StackCrunch, follow these steps, okay? So first, as you can see, I already have my assignments open. Um, i am already started this assignment, but now I want to open StackCrunch. Instead of going into the current page that I have open and then going to StackCrunch, which is going to just close this out, I've opened up a new tab. I'm going to go back to Pearson. I'm going to sign in. I'm going to go... Uh, into my course so I don't want anyone to see any grades of anybody or anything like that so I'm going to move this over to the side and then off camera I've clicked on the stack crunch option here and so here I'm now on a separate page in Pearson on the stack crunch and I'm going to go to the stack crunch website as you see it hasn't closed anything so that's good let me say open StackCrunch, and here I am. So now I can use StackCrunch and work on this problem at the same time, okay? Use this trick to also be able to use StackCrunch on your exams. So as far as how this problem works, what we're essentially going to be doing is taking the, uh, we're basically trying to figure out which graph this, this problem is talking about. It doesn't matter whatever metric we're looking at, but essentially what we're trying to figure out which graph separates the bottom 5% from the top 95%, okay? So we're looking at bottom, so that already kind of gives me an indication that I'm either looking at uh, this, either in, uh, between C and D, because the bottom would not be at the right hand. Uh, the right hand of the graph would represent higher or better values. Okay, so C or D. So how am I going to figure this out? Well, first I'm going to go into StackCrunch. I'm going to go to Calculators. I'm going to go to Normal. And as you can see here, here I have uh, a normal distribution. And this is a normal distribution, and it's also a Z distribution when the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the probability here. So you see here at the bottom, I can input P, and that will give me X. And X is basically going to be uh, the critical value, the, the Z score, okay? So I'm going to put in 0.05. I'm going to compute that, and here I can see, okay, I have essentially this graph here. I'm going to select that. It's already giving me a critical value as well, so I didn't need to worry about looking it up in a table or anything. I'm going to check my answer. That's correct. And then it's going to ask me the bone density score corresponding to a P of 5, sub 5 is, and it's already given me that. I know that this is the correct one compared to if I switch it and I'm looking at it like this um, because, well, the charts measure up, right? That's the first thing to do. As far as this question goes, that's kind of an easy thing. Uh, around to two decimal places, uh, 0.6, okay. So I'm going to put in negative 1.64. I'm going to check my answer. Nice work. Next question. Okay, so I've already done this one beforehand, uh, and this is basically now doing the reverse, okay? Um, or at least it looks like it's doing reverse, but it's actually asking the same thing as the previous question, okay? So it's now asking me to find the critical value. The critical value is within the parentheses here, given a probability of 0 0.09. So the sub here is talking about the probability, and I'm going to enter that in here. I'm going to compute that. And I am have a negative here, but I've already done this answer, and I can see that I'm actually looking for 1.34. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it. And that's the same here. Okay, this might be a little confusing, but this is the same. Uh, asking the same question, essentially. Put this in as 0 0.09. Oops, 
zero nine. Looking at it with this way, it gives me the same thing. And there is the correct answer, right? So it's important to make sure that you know if you're looking at a z-score to the right, or if you're looking at a z-score of the area to the left, and that is basically going to flip the sign. Okay, it's gonna either make it a positive or negative. So let's go over that one more time. When I had it as default like this, Right, I already switched things around for me. And I put in 0 0.09, okay, I calculate that, it gives me a negative. It's telling me because I'm looking at the area below this probability here, it's going to give me the critical value of a negative 1.34 and it's filling in this area here. Conversely, when I switch this around, and I'm now asking for 0 0.09, it's now going to give me, it's gonna basically flip the graph around, uh, do a 180, and now I'm looking for the area above 0 0.109, but the, and it gives me a critical value of 1.34. So what you can't really see on this graph here is that uh, aside from the, the, the z-score here, this is the z-score from minus three to three, right? And so this is the number that it's calculating here. So where essentially does this line uh, kind of intersect? You know, where does the area intersect on this line? And it's 1.34. What we have to be careful about is which side of the graph am I referencing to? Am I referencing to the area on the right side of the graph or am I referencing to the area on the left side of the graph? And the way that I am uh, able to contextualize that is that I'm telling StatCrunch if I'm looking for greater than this value or if I'm looking for less than this value. Since I'm putting in the probability first, I have to make sure I have this set correctly before I go ahead and uh, put in my probability and hit compute, right? So as you can see, this is the correct answer, 1.34, 1 1.34. Um, so if I were to actually try to, you know, say, okay, that's really confusing, I don't want to use StackCrunch, you can use the tables as well, okay? But the tables are also going to be a little bit confusing for the most part. Okay, now as you can see here, when you're looking at a table, this is the standard normal table, this is in your textbook, but they give it you here for free, uh, is essentially that it's the same thing, right? So we're looking for the area given a certain uh, percentile, right? So here's all the percentiles, this is the whole table of all the percentiles, and then here are all the Z scores. So three point, so if I'm looking for, if I'm gonna find the area of a Z score given a negative 3.4, flat, right? So this is negative 3.4, this is negative 3.41, this is negative 3.42. Uh, then I can calculate, then I can look up the area uh, that would be to the left of that. And I can show you here really quick, actually. So I'm going to put in negative point, uh, oops, no, neg negative 3.41, just for fun, okay? As you can see, this answer here, you can't even see it on here, it's so small, 0 0.0003, 0 0.0003. So it's doing the same thing looking at these tables, right? Okay, and so you have two tables here. You have negative z-scores and you have positive z-scores. So it's important to understand uh, which way you're looking at. Now this question, again, is asking, what is the area, 0 0.09? and I am looking for a probably a positive z-score, okay? I'm looking for the critical value uh, for the area to the right of this value. So I'm gonna click on the positive z-scores, okay? Because I know that's the correct thing that I'm going to be looking for. And I have 0 0.09. So really what I'm looking for now, and this is where it's tricky because it's giving me the area here. Remember, when I put this in before, 0 0.09, compute. It gives me the area to the right, but it's only going to be giving me areas to the left here, okay? So what I have to do is I have to basically look for the inverse of this. I'm not going to be looking for 0 0.09 in this table. I'm looking for 0.91, all right? And in 0.91, that is going to then be the uh, value that I'm going to get to be able to then plug in for my z-score, okay? So that is super tricky. That's why I kind of 
feel like if you don't really understand which side you're looking at, and if it's a positive Z score, or a negative Z score, and it's a Z, and you're looking for area on the left side of that Z or the right side of that Z, you can get mixed up very, very quickly. This gives you a little bit more of an intuition about which side of the area you're looking for and if the z-score is positive or negative. So again, just to kind of complete the example looking at the positive z-scores here, what I've determined is that I am looking for not 0 0.09, I'm looking for 0.91 because I'm subtracting 0 0.09 from 1, okay? So here I found it. Point, this is close enough actually, 0.90999. All right, and that gives me 1.34 on the column, on the row, and then on the column, 0 0.04, 1.34, 1.34. So that's the way to do it there. But it's, as you can already see, that it's a little tricky to be able to make sure that you're looking at the right table and then you're looking, making sure that you're calculating the right area because in here, there is no 0 0.09 within this whole table. So you're going to kind of be scratching your head as exactly where should I be finding this area to find the right z-score because that area of 0 0.09 doesn't exist within this table. And that's because it's only giving you the area to the left of that. And that is true for this as well. So if you were to try to calculate the area to the right of that, that's where you have to actually subtract what your area is from one to find it within the table appropriately. Okay, it's a really long explanation. I think that using the stack crunch method is a little more straightforward than the uh, table method because at the very least you can put things in, you can visualize things, you can even do between things, and it gets it a little bit more straightforward, and then at least you have two attempts and you can kind of figure out what you think is going to be the best uh, as you're kind of moving forward with that, okay? And now uh, I'm going to do a, uh, another question now, uh, question 20. And so now it's we're not doing z-score necessarily because now we're looking at IQ, and we're looking at a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15, and it's been nice enough to give me this kind of graph, this normal distribution where it's filled in. So using that same calculator, I can convert the mean to 100 and the standard deviation to 15 to, so that the uh, distribution now represents that of IQ. And then I know that I'm looking for an area or a probability of 0.7. And so I know that this is incorrect, so I'm actually going to flip it and see how it's flipped it for me there. I have to re -put, I have to put this in to make it more correct. Okay, so now I can check my work, make sure that I have everything that I think I'm doing correctly here. So I know it's a mean of 100, standard deviation of 15. I know that I'm looking for a probability of 0.7, and I know that I'm looking for the probability of 0.7 to the left. All right, and the indicated ice Q score for X, X is 1.07, round to one decimal place, 107.9. 1, 1, Check answer, good job. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go back to that really quickly again. So if I were to do this in, now this is Z-score, okay? So what it's actually gonna be asking you to do is to actually convert this um, into uh, this probability here into a z-score. Uh, so I already know that the probability is 0.7. I know I'm looking at the left. Uh, so essentially it's going to get a little bit harder because then I have to kind of reverse engineer my z-score to make it fit with my normal distribution. So now you see it's already a little bit more complicated. I'm going to look for 0 0.7, 0 0.7 around here. Uh, I think I kind of like that, but I'm not quite sure. Yeah, it's somewhere in between there, 0 0.5, 0 0.525, okay. And then essentially what I would do is calculate that. I would um, times that by my standard deviation and then add 100, okay. And then I'm pretty sure that would be uh, a fairly accurate uh, uh, pretty close to what you would get here, but now you're kind of doing some math, and if you have a rounding error of some sort, then you run into trouble. In this case, 
where you're no longer dealing strictly with z-score and now you're dealing with x, whatever x is dependent upon the mean and the standard deviation, uh, you could run into a lot more trouble. So I would strongly suggest just using StatCrunch for these types of things here. And especially when you then get into doing something with the in-between, that gets things even uh, hairier there when you have two values that you have to kind of straddle between. Okay, so I hope that helped. I hope I was able to be able to give you a workaround to be able to use StackCrunch for questions that don't immediately give you the option to use StackCrunch, that you're able to now use StackCrunch to be able to calculate uh, the, the z-score given a probability and a probability given a z-score, and how to enter those into the normal calculator here within StackCrunch, and then also to be able to calculate x of a normal distribution given a specific mean and standard deviation uh, given a specific type of probability. Okay? All right. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.